Life Advice is brought to you by Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Modelo, the official beer sponsor of the college football playoff. What is up, Steve? What is up, Kyle? Yo, Kyle's back. Back in L.A. Guess who's back? Back in L.A. Yeah. How long were you gone? Like 10 days. Flies, huh? A lot of Poughkeepsie. Went to Philly. I could take it or leave it. Philly, Philly? you can take or leave. Ooh, uh-oh, yeah. controversial. What about yeah. Big Dom? Well, you know, <laughs> so, well, you know, Sunday I went out to watch the Pats Chargers game, and I mean, I know that wasn't on the top of everybody's fucking list, but I mean, I went to like four bars, three of them that considered themselves sports bars, never even heard of Sunday Ticket. The last one I went to, they were like, well, we have YouTube TV, and I was like, I'm not going to argue with you. I think you have it. But I mean, every time I called, and I'm like, do you, got, do you guys get all the games? They're like, yeah, I come in there, and it's just a bunch of dudes in Eagles jerseys waiting for the, you know, four o'clock game, and they don't even understand what I'm saying. So, I mean, I I barely, I almost missed the first quarter, which, I mean, was, wasn't the worst thing in the world because that was a terrible I was game. Say, I, think for your, I think for your overall health, you probably, you probably didn't need to watch that game. But, I mean, I was just, that's what I really started to sour on Philly. Northern Liberties, maybe it was just that district. They're not, they don't know. They're just like, we just kind of get what's on Fox and CBS. I'm like, then why do you have six TVs in here? Whatever. Um, because yeah, no garage. one in Philly, because no one in Philly wants to watch any other team. I know. It's true. Okay. That, I'm, I'm sorry. It, that's kind of on you. You were in what are you Philly talking about? hoping Nobody to moves see... to Philly from anywhere else? Dude, I just, you want to go, you want to go into Southie Philly? being like, hey, do you guys, can you put on the Browns game? Like, well, if we're power it's... ranking games that day too, like, you know, it's just, it was the worst one, but they didn't have anything <laughs> other than like the Lions game that and like, was kind of it. So Lions whatever. football. Okay. All right. Let's get to a couple emails here. Uh, help does my wife's art suck unfortunately we can't share the visual on this one he did include some of her artwork huge fan 64205 34 years old basketball comp is danny granger i actually met my wife in a co-ed basketball league i was on the wing she was our point guard girl can hoop we won our league chip that season and the rest is history people are saying chip a lot more lately just i haven't noticed but i trust you yeah Fast forward 11 years. This makes me think he's a great husband that he played in a co-ed basketball league. Maybe that makes me sound like a Neanderthal, but I just... I, pl- I played in one at ESPN. Uh, you know. Basketball? Yeah, they had co-ed basketball there. Yeah, that girl, girl from actually. Duke could ball. She used to play with us all the time. Wasn't on my team. Wasn't no, that was before. That was before. That was like early, early Rosillo hotel days in Bristol. Um Anyway, third person. My wife has uh, recently taken up painting as a hobby. Uh, They've been married 11 years here. Hectic careers. Okay. Uh, She finds it calming and helps relieve her work stress. I'm all for it. I think it's great she has a hobby and that she's passionate about it and helps navigate the day-to-day grind. This guy does sound like a good husband. The issue I have is she wants to hang all of her art around our house. At first, one or two paintings were cool with me. The art is not great, but she's a self-aware amateur. She loves it, and I can see how much joy it brings her to display her work. The thing is, we now have about 8 to 10 hanging around the house, with more coming every couple weeks. She's even started removing other decor around the house to put up her art. (laughs) We're planning a big holiday party in 10 days with friends, family, and coworkers from both sides attending. I'm worried people will think it's weird to have all this amateur art on the walls, and this will cause some embarrassment. I know I'm probably the one who would feel embarrassed, not her, which I'm not proud of, dot, dot, dot. I think we get where your head's at. I've attached some of her artwork so you can see for yourself. Am I overreacting? Is the art actually better than I think? If not, how I navigate this without hurting her feelings? I would prefer to take it down before the party, but I don't know how to do it without crushing her. I need your help as objective viewers. Okay, um, I should have done this ahead of time, but let's uh, let's do it now. I got to send this art to the dudes. Oh, thanks. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could have done this before. Why is Saruti's email not preloading here? Mm. This isn't good. Kyle, I'm sending it to you now. Can you forward to uh, Saruti <laughs> this live? Is middleman? What is yeah, that? Great. <laughs> middleman. It. I'm, a, I'm a known guy. I don't really get art. Uh, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't know what makes good art. All of it? Art, art makes, the whole makes thing? bad art. Well, then I've like art. People just say art is just like people laundering money too, which makes sense to me. Like, oh yeah, this painting's worth two million dollars. Cool. Like, just because you said it was, or is it actually good? It's like three lines in like two different colors. I don't, I don't get it. So I, I like, about like the, attainable yeah, I like art. Stuff. Yeah. What about like a, a two hundred dollar thing? I don't know. Like, that's not, I don't it's know. probably not money laundering, right? That's probably just some guy really hoping somebody buys this thing, right? Maybe, maybe. But I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm not. So what, your what goes here. on your wall? Nothing, or you're just Maddie handles it all. 
Maddie mostly handles the decor. Yeah, we're we're big like posters people. Wherever we go, we buy those kind of like cool vintage posters. We try to hang those up. So I don't know. We're basic. It is what it is. Yeah, like after the Mad Men episode with Burt Cooper's Rothko, I was like, yeah, I dig it. And then it was like, are you, you know, you're almost like when you don't know anything about art, you're like, am I digging it because I'm supposed to or do I like it? But I do kind of like some of that stuff that looks really simple that other people would say, like, I can't believe that's worth that much. It's all just red. And it's then he used less red there and you're all fucking idiots. Uh, Yeah, no one no one's ever claimed that this is the pod that you come to for art evaluation, which is fine uh, if it never happens for us. Uh, Kyle, did you get him? Yeah, I think one of these would be great in like a bathroom or something, you know, <laughs> and like and not not in like a mean way. It's just like, oh, look at that. It's, uh, you know, maybe like a nice light colored bathroom. That first one you sent me. So, I mean, I could see if there's eight of these. I think you'd be like, what are we preparing for the, you know, the preschool art fair? Not preschool. That was mean. Uh, it's actually it's better than I could do for sure. Um, I don't know. It's just like landscapes. Uh, yeah. You know what this looks like? Bathroom um, photos. It looks like no. It looks like photos in like a like a coffee shop that have sure. been there for like three years, and they yeah. have a price tag on them, and no one ever wants to buy them. Yeah, it's that's to go what. Down. It's not bad art. Like it, it's good. She's you know I kind of like the tree one. Yeah, the tree one. <laughs> that's the one I like. I don't really want any of those hanging in my actual house. Like they just. They, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> We need to share the art. This sucks for the listener, but I want to. I'm actually glad this is the way it worked out for you to discover because you're just like, oh, the tree one's pretty good. They're they're landscapes. Um, I, yeah. I think someone would say this is kind of the impressionist genre. Um, <laughs> there's one where there's a sun. There's a the sun, sun in there. It's not. I'll be honest. It's not well done. It's not well done. The sun looks like a. It looks like a. It looks like the eye of Sauron a little perspective bit. Perspective <laughs> is off on the sun. But yeah, that's all right. Yeah, the that's sun though. I think that's. that's that that could be just a a specific heavy fog day where that sun is coming in. <laughs> I think that's user error. <laughs> you think that's a user error on that one? I think it's user um, error. So then the, the the other one's a farm, but it's just an incredible perspective from like behind a, a field, a meadow. I think the fourth one's actually kind of good. Um, I like the fourth one. The fourth one's my favorite one. The clouds are a little drippy in there. Uh, I'm sure somebody who's a real artist would be like, yeah, these are kind of like entry level. Hey, I just started taking art classes or I had three pints at this place. These are actually, these are not like when you paint and you get drinks. It's like a paint night. sip. These are, <laughs> these are way beyond that. Yeah. So let's, let's not do that. People it's have like, just, it's, it's like looking at nature. If you had like 2080 vision, that's what these are. You want to expand on that at all? Or no, it's, just like, it's, it's all blurry. It's just blurry landscape, you know? There's no detail in any of them. I don't, so. I think there's some truth, but I think after I've watched guys paint trees, I'm like, I think I could paint a tree by the end of the week. Like, I think yeah. a lot of it's just brush technique. Here's the problem is the first picture, uh, the first one that he shares with us, um, you can see that it's on this plastic shelf tray mm-hmm. that's just installed yep. into the wall <laughs> that's next to another picture. So it sounds like she's hanging them all up. Which I think here's what you do. I think what you I I think you encourage her. (laughs) You encourage her to be like, hey, you should try to sell these. And then when it when it flops real hard, you don't have to give her the bad news. That's way worse. That's that's some of the worst advice you've ever given on the show. No one's going to buy these, dude. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. So that when no one buys them, she maybe gets the hint and you don't have to tell her that her art sucks. It just sucks. You should sell these, but don't put them up in our house. This is, uh, you, you sound like me. You sound like the guy who's never been married. I can't believe that. You, do you know how bad that would be? Because then she's devastated that nobody wanted it. And then you go, hey, look, the market's just not there for you. So let's take these down. <laughs> you could just say art is subjective. You know, people don't get it. When you're way better, these are going to be important. People are going to want yeah, these. Exactly. When you're awesome. <laughs> what if you say, if she has a garage and he's like, you know what I think we do? A little notebook here. Get the easel out. We'll get the tarps down. And this just yeah, becomes your workshop. And we just keep. Did you say that? I'm sorry. No, no. It was that. what I was going to say. I didn't say it. But I was thinking if there's a room that we could just, we could have the the art room. That'd be great. Mm. Just a crafts corner. Something like that. Uh, that'd be good. Serenity I was gonna by other- Jan. Just a candle <laughs> right, room. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, the office references are just perfect on the show. Um, the other thing I was thinking well, there's is maybe a Pam you one could... coming. So, you know, oh, go great, ahead. Great, great. Art school. Um, I thought maybe you could like B 
become like a HGTV person in the next month, like really hard. It's be like, I'm really into like redecorating right now. You guys sit down, you watch a couple things. It's like a good couple show if, if you can stomach it, I think, you know, any of those HGTV. And you're like, I'm really into minimalism right now. You know, we don't really have open spaces, but I kind of like to clear the walls a little bit. Just put a maybe like, maybe you can just be like, be really passionate about redesigning the house. And then that's the way. It comes. You'd be like, you know, new year coming up. I really like to get a fresh start. And why don't we just start now? Why don't we just start now? We'll take a bunch of stuff off the walls. You know, maybe we'll head to Marshall, see if there's any, you know, any subtle fit, any subtle tchotchkes we can put on the coffee table. So you just have a whole home rebrand and that just gets washed away. Yeah, you could encourage her to give them to gifts to family members, see how they react Christmas to it. Christmas coming up. Yeah. Yep. You know. That's a great, yeah, I see you just redeemed yourself. Start, yeah, start handing them out. Start handing them out as gifts. I think it is a little weird, though, that she would just want to hang them all up. And then he's got this Christmas party coming. I think he just, I think that's the night you get into the brown water and you start <laughs> slowly sipping whiskey the entire time, watching all your friends and relatives just admire all the art. Um, right. <laughs> a lot of, hmm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those, a lot of, hmm. Although if you're aggressive, if you're aggressive on on the brown stuff, then maybe maybe not. Truth comes out. Yeah, right. I'm just trying to be like, I don't get it. I don't see it. And then you <laughs> put you up would a stop, poster. honestly. <laughs> right. And you, by the end of the night, you're putting up a poster of Ken Griffey Jr. in your fucking kitchen to like counter her decor. <laughs> the so St. Pauli girl. <laughs> yeah, I just I really don't I don't know that there's a win here for you, man. Because she's obviously, you know what you do. This is the best advice I think I can give you. Although I like I like where Sir Rudy redeemed himself. It, it's probably a phase. It's probably a phase and you're just going to have to ride it out. And it might be a couple of years. And then she's going to look around and go, I don't That's know. Crazy. Like, what's, a miss. Yep. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> maybe you just start throwing out like restoration hardware and crate and barrel catalogs and you just have them on everywhere. Bathroom, coffee table. And she's like, oh yeah, right. That's right. That's what right. a room is supposed to look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, parents with no social cues. Here we go. 25 years old, reporting in 511-190, former member of the 1,000-pound club. He did 225 on the bench, 405 squat, 40, 495 deadlift, 1,000-pound club. That's that's the club. 1,200 club, looks down on the 1,000-pound club. But uh, you say, sorry, sorry, 1,200-pounders. I know we have some advice uh, on... We've done some gym etiquette stuff before, some advice on parenting someone else's kids. <laughs> I would like to propose a dilemma that combines the two. I live in a newer apartment community with amenities such as a nice complex gym. The gym is very aesthetically pleasing, but only has one of uh, each piece of equipment important for the story. Yes, this is. So it's not like a gym gym. It's the complex gym and it's smaller. In almost two years of this, yeah, in two years of this setup, I've yet to experience anything like what I'm about to describe. Tonight, a father uh, brought his two children under the age of 12 uh, along for a workout. So two kids under 12. Not only that, as a family, they packed along a speaker to blast music in a language I've never heard. Okay, so they're foreign. Uh, the children proceeded to jump on each piece of equipment, bounce on the exercise ball, swing on the cable machine, play hide and seek. Every 10 minutes or so, the father would yell in whatever language and the children would then scream, cry. This exchange went on for over an hour, all while I had headphones in with nothing playing as I tried to pick my spot and make eye contact for an angry head shake. The questions I have are, one, especially as a 25 year old, am I entitled to tell someone else how to parent? It's going to be no 99.9% .9 of the time. Just, just so you know, we'll, we'll leave that point one. Does the language barrier give them more leeway? Yeah, probably. Uh, number three, how many more times does this need to happen for me to put in some kind of formal complaint? Uh, and then he says, four, am I totally off base? So to review, if we go one entitled to parent, other kids almost always know, like almost always know. I mean, unless the kid's jumping off of something and you save There them. was a time, right? There yeah. was a time. What, do you have a story? No, just there was a time when you could. And it's yeah. just like, you know, be like, you yeah, tell them what uncles. happened. And the, your parents would be like, well, what did you do? It's not like, it's not like, who was it? It's going to be like, well, why were you fucking up? I'm sure it was you. That's the way it used to be. Then um, the language thing is, is a whole nother challenge. How many more times? I don't know. One more time. <laughs> yeah, you know it's cool i think it's kind of like guys especially like early on you're like oh i don't know if i want to be like everyday hr guy right you know apartment right. complex grocery store like you finally a complaint at ralph's like what the fuck um and then when he asks if he's totally off base he's he's not that sucks no. especially if this is going to be your gym i mean that's brutal and by the way like 
the language barrier, somebody being from another country, like it definitely adds a layer. You know, it's another, it's like moving up a level in a video game. It's like, okay, this, now this conflict involves somebody who's not going to want to like, there's just going to be a lot of problems with you guys getting on the same page. But he knows, he knows. I'm always amazed when I see like different, you know, people from different parts of the country and how much they all want to hang out. That's what always blows my mind about like different cultures. Be like, wait, all of you are going? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Maybe it's better. Maybe it means they're closer. You know, I've just, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's better. Maybe it means they're closer. You know, I've just, I just, I don't know. I just, it's something, something that I've never really, uh, never really thought of until I kind of see just how, how people can be different about things. Doesn't mean anybody's right or wrong or whatever. Uh, but you can't do this. You can't, you can't continue to let this happen. I mean, unless you just, you know, unless you just try to go around his hours, you know, like how often is it going to happen? If you're both five o'clock guys and these kids are getting in their cardio at, at five, then you're going to have to either change up your routine. Maybe happens one more time. You say something because, you know, can you, can you look at him? Can, is he giving you anything back? Is he giving you any kind of lean or read that he's accepting of maybe an yeah, adjustment? Give him a look. To, yeah. Give him a look and just be like, you know, this I gave a guy a look man. the other day. The guy was working out uh, at the hotel gym. There were very few benches. It was really, really busy. And he was doing lat raises with dumbbells while his ear pods, water bottle, and towel rested on an available bench. You just go, so that's, what was that, a shelf? <laughs> <laughs> man, they've got four shelves in this gym. Right, right in front of the dumbbells. So what do you think, guys? Uh, I, I mean, from my time at Gold's Gym, you can't have anybody um, under the age of like 14 in the main gym. Like I worked in the kid zone. That was my domain. I made sure those kids had a great time. Uh, parents love me, but they, like it's just a safety thing. You can't have kids under 14 in the gym. These, this dude said under 12 and he said they're scream crying. I'm assuming they're probably closer to 8, 10. So, I mean, you could probably, I would say if you're going to complain, maybe pick one complaint. Don't be like, these people suck because they, you know, they come in and they blast, you know, some music no, and you they've this got kids. family. Yeah. Okay, this family. I'm sorry. But this group. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think you could just say like, listen, uh, there's, there might even be a sign. Like you might not even seen it, but there might be like nobody under the age of 12. You know, who knows? So like that could be your, I would pick one complaint though. If you were going to do a complaint, don't, don't be like hammer this this family with a bunch of things but if you can get the kids out of there maybe it'd be easier for one day to come up to the dude and just be like hey do you mind like not blasting music or or don't and it'll be better because there's not two kids taking up you know space in a sounds like a small and un not well equipped room so there might even be a rule about just you can't have kids in this thing because it's dangerous and it's probably an insurance thing right i mean yeah, you're not going to tell people how to parent their kids. And I, I, I would just I just I think the passive aggressive looks and just make sure that like on every step of the way, like he knows. Is there anybody else in there, too, that can kind of like tag team with you on this? So you're not the only person who's doing who's being the asshole. Like, I would just wonder if there's somebody else in there who could also give some looks or some just general negative vibes to this person. So they get the hint. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, usually like the I don't know, like if it's I don't know if it's like a European thing. Sometimes Europeans don't give a shit about this stuff. So you might just be shit out of luck. Um I don't know what kind of, you know, what, what, what you said they're foreign. I don't know where they're from, but you kind of might be shit out of luck here. Yeah. Like whenever I go to Europe and I'll be like, you're just going to just eat outside and smoke cigarettes and drink <laughs> Aperol spritz. And there's a fucking kid in their yeah. child seat and then another four year old. And it's like creeping up on last call. Like what, what is going on here? <laughs> there's no rules, man. <laughs> there's, there's no rules in Europe. I don't know. Sometimes I think they've got it more figured out. You know, maybe we're uptight. Maybe my dad, although my dad one time after a, a UConn Huskies game, his buddy wanted to go in to Chuck Steakhouse and like get a couple of drinks. And my dad didn't drink. So it wasn't that he wanted to do that. So he felt like it was sort of like guide code. He had to go with him, which meant it was me like at nine years old in the Civic Center lobby, just bored out of my fucking mind. And I remember I just walked right into Chuck's like a bar. I just walked in. I was like, dude, can we go? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. That's life advice. 